Hello and welcome to MLab 1231, Parasitology and Mycology. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster and this is going to be the first of a three-part presentation on the class Cestoda, otherwise known as the tapeworms. The objectives for this presentation are going to be to identify the taxonomy which Cestoda belong, describe the general biological characteristics of the cestodes, explain how humans are infected, list morphological characteristics of common cestodes that cause human infection, and to explain the life cycle of the cestodes listed in this presentation. Some of the terminology that we're going to cover includes hermaphroditic, which is having both male and female reproductive organs within the same organism, Scolex, which is a modified attachment organ located at the anterior end of the tapeworm. On that scolex is a rostellum, which is a fleshy anterior protuberance that may include one or more rows of circular hooks that could be retractable. The tegument is the body surface of platyhelminthus, which is the phylum which cestoed belong. And it is also the site of nutrient and oxygen absorption and waste excretion. And this will make more sense when we get into the anatomy of cestodes. The oncosphere is also known as the hexacanth embryo. It is modal and is a first stage of larva of certain cestodes. And it is outfitted with hooklets that are used to attach themselves to the intestinal wall of the arthropod intermediate host. A proglottid is one or more segments of the tapeworm, and each of those proglottids contain both male and female reproductive organs. The operculum is a lid-like cover on the shell of certain species of cestodes, which is used to evacuate the hexacanth embryo. The strobila is the entire body surface of the tapeworm. And racemos is a clusters of branching nodular terminal spines that resemble a cluster of grapes. And this is going to be relevant when we get into tinea solium toward the end of this series. Cestodes are one of two classes of parasites that cause human infection that belong to the phylum platyhelminthus. The other are the trematodes or digenio, which we will get into in the next series. Platyhelminthus are known as the flatworms, and the cestodes belonging to platyhelminthus are known as the tapeworms, which is a type of flatworm. Uh, some general characteristics of the tapeworms is that they are multicellular. They are flat with bilateral symmetry and dorsal ventrally flattened and solid with no body cavity. The size varies from one millimeter to 20 meters or longer. The adult worm is flat and ribbon-like with an anterior scolex and the strobila features a chain of segments called proglottids. Again, these proglottids contain both male and female sex organs that are capable of sex of self-fertilization, therefore they are hermaphroditic. They lack a mouth, a digestive tract, and a vascular system, and they therefore absorb all of their oxygen and nutrients through their tegment. This is done by the tegament having a specialized microvilli that secretes enzymes that help break down and absorb nutrients. The development of the proglottids begin by budding from the anterior end immediately behind the scolex and push their way backwards. As they push their way back, the proglottids develop eggs, they become mature, and these proglottids from anterior to posterior, the further back from the scolex they become, the more filled with eggs they become, and that is said to be gravid.
So the more posterior you become from the scolex, the more gravid Uh, the reproductive system of the cestodes include testes, which are spread throughout the segment, and the sperm of those testes is collected in a seminal vesicle, which is delivered to the female organs. That female organ receives the sperm via copulatory specules, and it includes ovaries, which produce those eggs and are stored in the uterus. That's going to be the conclusion of the first of the three presentations. We'll pick this back up with part two, where we will start talking about individual species of cestode.